Is Greg Doucette a hypocrite? Hmm. Let's talk about that one. Okay, so one of the things with Greg Doucette is he's very polarizing. So people tend to either love or hate him. And that kind of creates a problem because when you're a content creator and you want to get a following, you're basically going to appeal to either people who love him or people who hate him. It's kind of hard to have a nuanced approach. Uh, the people who do have a nuanced approach and say, well, yeah, he's right on this and wrong on that, or at least I agree with this or disagree with that, they it it impairs your ability to grow because you're going to either upset one side or the other. So it creates a situation where if you don't have a strong opinion, it's almost best to have no opinion at all, at least openly. Uh, now, interestingly, what started me down this current rabbit hole was one of the people who who is somebody who seems to be one of Greg's followers. He likes what he has to say, and I believe he's even sponsored by, uh, by Greg's supplement company, came out with a video and interestingly kind of called him out a little bit, asking him to respond to some allegations that some of his content is contradictory. And so, so this actually started, this kind of interested me a little bit more because I'm, I'm kind of sick of seeing people, you know, know, based on who they are, okay, are, am I going to agree with something he said if I'm addressing this or, or disagree with it? Um, so, so this actually interested me when, when I saw this person kind of calling on Greg to respond, to, to answer for himself, to see, okay, is there contradictions here? So I went down this rabbit hole a little bit and we wind up in the place where, of course, we wind up. And it's uh, this person, uh, Gre no, Jeffrey Verity Schofield, who I was vaguely familiar with. Uh, when I started liking some of uh, Greg Doucette's content, this guy came up because I guess there was some drama between them. And again, you feel kind of cornered. You feel like, oh, I have to pick a side here. And the thing is, personally, um, I, yeah, I've found a lot of, of Greg's content to be good. I have seen the contradictions, some of them that they're talking about, and I'll get into that in a moment. But this Jeffrey uh, Verity Schofield person, I didn't, I didn't know much of. I've heard a few people say, yeah, his content is good and that. And so I, I, I'm not familiar with much of his content, but I did see the uh, the stuff he did with uh, with regards to Greg Doucette. And what it was was something that really kind of rubbed me personally the wrong way because I've seen the kind of these kind of weird tactics with people like Vince Del Monte and things like that, where they're they're basically underhanded salesmen more so than than actual fitness people. And in this case, what he was doing was he was, he had a video where he was, um, what do they call it? He was basically name dropping to, to get views, which is fine. People do it all the time. And it was, it was supposed to be a review on Greg Doucette's book, uh, his, his, um, I think it's called, uh, harder than last time, his, his training ebook. So, uh, Jeffrey, decided to um, to review that book, which, fair enough. The thing is, the way he did it was he basically did a one-to-one -one comparison saying, well, Greg's book is bad because it doesn't have all these great things that my book has. See? And then, here, you can buy my book instead. So he, he, used, he used it as a marketing tool and it, in a pretty shameless way that just rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like, okay, you're that kind of person. You're, you're, you know, so I, I have no respect for people who do that kind of thing. 
Uh, so, so this guy clearly had a vendetta against Greg because Greg kind of called him out on that, which I, I think rightly so. Uh, Greg's point was like, yeah, you're gonna, you wrote your book your way, I wrote my book my way. So, of course, you're gonna say, well, I think Greg's book should have been written the way mine was, which fair criticism of his criticism of Greg's book. Um, so with those two contrasts, I would have to easily take Greg Doucette's side on that because uh, Jeffrey Verity Schofield did a kind of underhanded little salesmanship job, which, uh, I, like I said, I don't like. So following that, I guess what happened was uh, Greg, uh, or Jeffrey, geez, the two Gs, um, Jeffrey uh, basically had it in for Greg and it made a whole bunch of videos kind of trying to find nitpick everything he says and, and whatever and so again people picking sides of who's right here and i think at one point there was some weird thing where um where uh jeffrey showed some of greg's book or something and, and it got content striked or something and greg had to come out and apologize for that and say i didn't mean for me to give you this content strike or whatever and whatever but at least he i don't know what the big deal is anyway but anyway he he came out and apologized which is again another marker of respect you know you respect someone when they come out and say my bad i did something wrong and i'm gonna try to fix that so when you have greg doing something that i i gives me respect for him and you have Jeffrey doing something that gives me the opposite of respect for you. It's pretty easy for me to pick sides, but I still don't like doing it. I'm not going to hitch my wagon to one person and say everything that person says is right. So when this came out um, and, and people are saying, well, there's contradictions in Greg's material. I, I was certainly interested, but of course, when it came down to, again, Jeffrey Verity Schofield trying to find things and nitpick and make it about him and try to get views using Greg, it's like, well, okay. All right. Let's see what's happening here. That being said, there seem to be sort of two things going on with this. One was uh, Greg suggesting that if you don't have six pack abs, then you are fat. And I've seen some of the content on this. It's, this is kind of a stupid thing and it, it devolves into basically an argument in semantics. Um, because, you know, Greg's saying, well, if you have, if your abs are covered with fat, then you are ergo fat. Well, that's, again, just semantics. What do you define fat as? I don't know. Who cares? Who cares? It's stupid. It's not even worth talking about. The other thing, which I think is a bit more interesting, is to do with main gaining. Now, Greg's has been pushing this philosophy of main gaining for a long time, and, and it's a fascinating idea. Um, it's something that I'm personally not a big fan of. Um, but the idea is being you're, you're trying to stay very slightly above uh, your caloric maintenance in an effort to slowly build muscle without getting fat. The problem is, Greg himself says that, and, and rightfully so, says that you your calories in is an estimation. Your calories out is an estimation. So trying to balance that and keep that within about 30 calories is it's impossible. You're, you're not going to be able to do it. More than likely, what you'll do is you'll find you're kind of flip-flopping. One day you'll be slightly above, one day you'll be slightly abo below, and you're going to get nowhere. That's why I'm not a big fan of it. Um, the other weird thing is that um, his when he talks about the idea of reverse dieting, which is when you're coming off a diet slowly, incrementally adding more and more and more calories, like 100 calories, for a while and then increase it incrementally and he has criticized that and called it stupid which i i don't see a way around that if you are going to be tr attempting to main gain they they're very similar in what they're trying to do which is to gradually build up your calories so um so i do think there is a little bit of contradiction there and again it probably just comes down to semantics and um, 
what is the practical takeaway for people? For me, it's, it's, it's think. It's, uh, we, we live in a world that's so divided right now that we feel we have to pick sides. We feel we have to, to, to take on beliefs that don't even reflect our true values just because that's the side we've picked. I think this is a terrible mindset. I think we should allow ourselves to be nuanced in our thinking. And I mean, so so for the example of, of Greg, I, like I say, if I had to choose between Greg and Jeffrey, I would, I have way more respect for Greg. I do. Um, that doesn't mean that everything that Jeffrey says is wrong. In fact, I think most of what he says is right. Uh, I just don't like the way he conducts himself in certain ways. Um, and certainly it doesn't mean that I think that everything Greg says is right because I don't. I mean, main gaining, I don't think it, for most people is the best approach. That's my personal opinion. I think, um, and it was actually uh, reading some of Tom Venuto's work, I think I found quite helpful in coming to that conclusion. And, and my preference is to do what, what you would call a lean gain. So look at more like a, a 100 to, well, more like 200 or, or more uh, caloric surplus just to make sure you're actually in a caloric surplus all the time, but not a huge caloric surplus. I guess it comes down to blind faith. Don't have blind faith. Don't be ideological. Allow yourself to think. I think if you do that, you will be happier and you will be more successful in virtually every aspect you can be successful in. Just my thoughts. Now piss off.